um, resumed. Chair would like to ask the secretary, Claire, to acknowledge the presence of our guests both personally and virtually. Claire, please, you are recognized. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning to our resource persons. Uh, I would like to acknowledge the presence of the following um, guests, both on um, physically present and um, attending online. We have with us today um, Attorney Joseph Estrada from the uh, from Edcom. Uh, we have Attorney Joharic Madigaya from the Department of Labor um, and Employment. From the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, we have Attorney Joyce Balong. From the Department of Budget and Management, we have At Attorney Trisha Baraan. From the Dangerous Drugs Board, we have General Doris Dorigo. From the um, National Commission on Indigenous People, we have uh, Mr. Leovic Banosok. From the Tawi Tawi Regional Agricultural College. We have the DBM Regional Office um, Region 9 Acting Chief Geisha Hazel Wee. Uh, good morning. For what bill is Region 9 here? Ah, I'd like to acknowledge and recognize the presence virtually of um, Congressman Mark Go and Senator Bongo. Congo, good morning. But parehong go pala yun. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, to what do I own? To what do I have the pleasure of your presence, uh, Congressman Go? Aling bilang sa yo? Uh, marami po kong uh, bills, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, first, uh, yung pong, uh, uh, creating the tripartite council. Ah, okay, I saw it. Yeah, I'll go through it chronologically, but it will be very fast, um, Congressman Go. So please bear with us. We have a short agenda today compared to our previous agendas um, in previous hearings. Um, so allow me to start. I'd like to acknowledge the presence as well um, of Senator uh, Bongo. Sen Bong, good morning. Um, proceeding to the agenda, item A, which includes items 1 and 2, Senate Bill number 2115 and House Bill number 7721. An act mandating TESDA to institutionalize a technical vocational education training and livelihood program designed specifically to rehabilitate drug dependence and appropriating funds, therefore. May I acknowledge the press? May I um, invite the comments of um, the Dangerous Drugs Board? I believe the representative is online. Sinian. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. General, ma'am, good morning. Um, yes, may I get your inputs on this bill, ma'am? Wala ba tayong ganyan ngayon? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Mr. Honor, Chair. for inviting the dangerous to the to this hybrid joint public At the outset, please allow us to express our support on the following proposed bills. Number one, Senate Bill Number 215. An act mandating the technical education and skills development authority to institutionalize technical vocational education, training, and livelihood program designed specifically for rehabilitating drug dependence and appropriating funds. 
authored by the Honorable Honor Christopher, Christopher Lawrence Bongo. And likewise, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mr. Bill number 777, which is an act mandating also that it's designed and designed and Ma'am, forgive me. Ma'am, yes. ma excuse me. Yes, sir. I presume you're, you're reading from a position paper. Yes, sir. Kindly just submit the position paper to us and address the query of the chair. My query was, is there or is there not an existing program of TESDA specifically for drug dependence? Yes, Mr. Chair, we have actually two board regulations promulgated relative to these two proposed bills. We have uh, regulation number one, series of entitled Guidelines in the Implementation of the Aftercare Program for Recovering Drug Dependence and Regulation Number 7, Series of 2019, entitled Consolidated and Revised Rules Governing Access to Treatment and Rehabilitation Programs and Services. These regulations, Mr. Chair, were issued in accord with the consistent intention of the DDB to have an open door and open for, for any program, program initiative, and or intervention, intervention to address, address the, plight the plight of the rehabilitated people. Giving them are the there specifics, ma'am, are there specifics yes, to this program? Yes, Mr. Aside Chair, from the declaration of policy of one in seven, are there specifics to this program? Yes, actually, Mr. Chair, we have a continuing program continuing with program Tesla. Tesla. Uh, we are giving uh, training for our other dependents. Can you submit, ma'am? Can you submit a copy of your resolution number one and resolution number seven? Right. Yes, Mr. Chair, we'll do. And do you have a memorandum of understanding or agreement with TESDA? Yes, Mr. Chair, we'll also submit to the committee. Yes, please, kindly um, do so. So are you telling this committee that TESDA already has a program for, yes. drug, for the rehabilitation of drug dependents? Yes, Mr. Chair, because they are one of our partners in the implementation of the Philippines. Anti-legal drug strategy, and it is in their implement their plan to support all our programs, interventions relative to rehabilitation. Who are your other partners to rehabilitate drug dependents? May I ask? We have Department other of government Education, agencies? Mr. Chair, Department Chair, of Education, Department of Social Welfare and Development, and we have also and Department also of Labor and Employment. And employment. employment. We have test. Uh, we have CHAD also, Commission on Higher Education. Then, likewise, in the last team, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. And a lot more um, specifically on Ched, ma'am. Ma'am, specifically on Ched. What does okay. your MOU or MOA with Ched state? Anong gagawin ng Ched in the development of programs to rehabilitate former drug dependents? Uh, as far as Ched is concerned, Mr. Chair, we have a collaboration with them. As far as the institutionalized learning. Um, um, we have a uh, drug, drug learning institutions. institutions. For that matter, Mr. Chair. Drug free learning institutions. So it's not a program to rehabilitate. Actually, Mr. Chair, the the primary or the primary agency for rehabilitation on top of all this programs is the Department of Social Welfare and Development. No, so my question, ma'am, is aside from drug-free educational institutions, what is CHED doing, if any, in coming up with a program to help rehabilitate former drug dependents? 
um, Mr. Chair, actually their programs is more on um, inviting the Dangerous Drugs Board to conduct trainings on drug education and prevention. So it has nothing to do with uh, training or helping re helping rehabilitate former drug dependents? It's more on drug prevention, Mr. Chair. Drug preventive education is so this bill, if at all, if enacted into law, will simply institutionalize whatever it is TESDA is already doing? Yes, Mr. Chair. We fully support this bill because this will further strengthen our program to the rehabilitated people. Additionally, ma'am, can you submit to us? No, I'll just ask it from Dole, but you can submit to us as well. Can you submit to us the MOA or the MOU between Dole and um, the Dangerous Drugs Board? Will do, Mr. Chair. Thank you, ma'am. May I ask the rep of Dole, um, what existing programs do you have, if any, to um, assist in the training and livelihood programs of former drug dependents? Attorney Maligaya, who can respond? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, in, in case of livelihood, Mr. Chair, uh, the Bureau of Workers with special concerns po ang may handle. So, anong ginagawa? At BWSC po uh, and regional offices of the department provides livelihood uh, for the informal sector po. Not the informal sector. I'm talking of drug former drug dependents. What is the program of DOLE, if any, for former drug dependents insofar as training and their livelihood programs outside of TESDA? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I'm not I'm not really privy with the BWSC po since uh, we're uh, I'm handling from the union and uh, from the Bureau of Labor Relations. But, kayo but uh, for uh, Mr. Chair, for the tripartite po, uh, for the unemployed underemployment. But this was part of the agenda. We will check, Mr. Chair, po, uh, since the department is yet to submit for the official position paper po. Sir, forgive me. Benny is a friend of mine, but I think it's incompetence on the part of Dole to send people here who cannot respond to the bills that's included in the agenda. I do not require secretaries or undersecretaries or assistant secretaries to attend in any of my hearings for as long as the people they send can actually respond to very simple questions such as this that's included in the agenda. Um, kindly convey to your superiors. It's unacceptable. And next time I call for a hearing, Secretary Laguesma should attend. Um, otherwise, we will simply ignore any position Dole has on any of the bills pending before this committee. Um, again, kindly convey that it is unacceptable to the chair to send reps that cannot come into the bills pending before this committee, and we send the agenda to your office. Who is the representative of TESDA? Attorney Joyce? Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning to the Honorable Committee. Good morning, Joyce. Your comments on the on the Senate bill and the House bill. Um, Mr. Chair, um, may we highlight that drug surrenders and dependents are among us. Actually, they are considered our special clients. Our unmarried is the circular. They are given they are given scholarship program. So, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for enrolling us. Uh, courses namin sa TESDA. And as mentioned po kanina, we have a memorandum of agreement. Uh, uh, itang agencies din. Uh, uh, it's uh, the provision of skills uh, training skills uh, at training uh, drug dependence po. Specifically, specifically, Attorney Joyce, you have, do you have a curriculum or a program for former drug dependence in TESDA regardless of the course? Halimbawa, heavy equipment training man yan, carpentry, ma manicure, massage. Is there a separate course or training for former drug dependents or they're just simply lumped and given priority to the available courses or trainings at TESDA? It's the latter po, Mr. Chair. So priority lang sila? Yes po, Mr. Chair. No other special way of treating or handling them? Mr. Chair, uh, 
as regards the implementation of uh, the skills training program, so you have our uh, 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 Babes Andrade who can address the ultimate technology. Ma'am, um, the bill of Senator Go and the bill passed in the House seeks to institutionalize the training and livelihood programs at TESDA. If the only thing TESDA has to offer former drug dependents is priority in inclusion, um, what this, anong, anong kina special nun? I mean, in the explanatory note of both bills, it says we will institutionalize test the training. Fine. So what? I don't test the training other than giving them priority. Is there? Mr. Chair, in case for... Um, it's okay, ma'am, if there is none. I'm not, I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm, I'm just asking. So there's none. It's just priority in your trainings and livelihood programs. Currently, yes, for Mr. Chair. Prioritization. Understood. Um, Chair hereby, hereby orders that Senate Bill Number one, 2115 and House Bill Number 7721 be consolidated and um, refer to a technical working group um, in order to specify the um, training and or um, livelihood programs that would set up that, that would be set apart different and distinguishable from the usual training programs being offered by tesda specifically for rehabilitated or former drug dependents and for this purpose um, for the twg to take into account the DDB MOAS or MOUs with um, DOLE, with um, TESDA, and with SHED. The, the TWG is also directed to take into account um, possible additional CHED functions that uh, may help insofar as um, training and livelihood programs that can be given to former drug dependents who are enrolled in higher educational institutions under the supervision of CHED. So ordered. Moving on, House Bill Number 7370, an act creating a tripartite council to address unemployment, underemployment, and job skills mismatch problem. For this reason, may I acknowledge um, Congressman Go. Uh, Mark, yes. good morning. Yes, you uh, are recognized, you. sir. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and uh, the members of the Senate Committee on higher, higher and vocational education. Again, Mr. Chair, thank you Chair, for including you. House Bill 7364, an act uh, creating a tripartite council to address employment, underemployment, and the job skills mismatch problem in the country and appropriating in today's agenda. Mr. Chair, based on the data from recent studies, about a quarter of the unemployed in our country are college graduates. Despite the efforts of the efforts of higher or commission on higher education, improve access to higher education as well as promote relevant higher education in the country. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, the sad reality that there is still a shortage of college graduates in the fast growing sector, and yet there are unemployed and underemployed graduates in the sector. This was proven by the IDS study in its uh, 2016 report entitled are higher education institutions responsive to changes in the Mr. Chair, it is clear that the educated constitutes the majority of the unemployed and underemployed in the country. Our education curriculum is shown by recent data is no longer responsive to the demands of industries and businesses operating in the global economy. Mr. Chair, while the Chair has consistently encouraged the students to enroll in courses like agriculture, engineering, information technology, teacher education, health services, it can be observed that in reality, only 25% of college graduates finish a degree in business administration and only 3% 
graduates studied at the school. The PIDS study also showed that about 40% of employed Filipinos and other residentials understand what is needed in their jobs. These individuals, however, earn only 5% for finishing their studies despite being relatively overeducated for their positions. The prospects for employment are much bleaker for senior high school graduates enrolled in college able to complete their programs. This drives us to the point that although education is a great equalizer, the current situation is the otherwise. Obtaining a degree in higher education institutions in this country nowadays is no longer a guarantee that you will have a job after graduation. Mr. Chair, this is especially true for industries requiring highly specialized skills, which unfortunately some of our college graduates do not possess. Apparently, the problem of job is not much is one of our long-time challenges in developing the country's employment in optimizing skills, talents, and competencies of our working class. It is also a crucial concern to the proper utilization of this budget that goes into the education sector. This measure means the creation of a tripartite council, which shall be a regular coordinating body among the government, <coughs> and industry sectors, the primary task of monitoring employment and employment, job skills mismatch, among others, and formulate policies and programs to address the job skills mismatch. In the, the bill also provides the primary council, which shall be attached to the judge or administrative and budget <laughs> shall be composed of representatives from the government, academic, and industry sectors. Mr. Chair, Mr. the Chair. bill directs also the Council to conduct an inventory, <laughs> review, and evaluation of policies, <laughs> academic <laughs> programs, and curriculum, <laughs> and public HEIs, <laughs> technical vocational <laughs> institutions, <laughs> as well as to assess the qualification, <laughs> skills, and competencies <laughs> of students and graduates of higher education courses and technical vocational education and training. More importantly, the Council can guide our HCIs, allow them to have a better understanding of the labor market, identify what the jobs are and what skills and competencies are required for these vacancies. Again, Mr. Chair, solicit immediate approval of this measure for this committee. Thank you very much and good morning. Thank you, Congressman Go. Congressman Go, in lieu of a BICAM, if in case we approve it, can I run by you some of the changes I intend to make in this bill? Um, among them would be, number one, to clarify the tripartite nature of the council. It's more a matter of style, meaning government, um, academe, and private sector. Number two, to include um, the PRC and the DO, um, DOST as part of the government side of the Tripartite Council. I make mention of DOST because of new technologies that may be adopted um, in so far as harnessing the talent of our youth. And PRC because it is useless. Even if we change the curriculum and still the students are trained to pass board exams that are no longer even relevant. Nag-aaral sila para pumasa sa exam, hindi para makakuha ng trabaho at makakuha ng skill. I think PRC should be made part of this. Um, in so far as um, private educational institutions are concerned, it is covered already. In so far as industry is concerned, may I suggest that in lieu of the Makati Business Club, which is a small, it's an association actually, um, Let's, in, let's replace it with the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry and consider, too, the inclusion of the foreign chambers of commerce and industry, which has businesses here, especially in the call center industry or sector, that might have a lot of inputs in so far as um, the matching issue and problem um, is um, concerned. Um, these are the amendments we intend to, subject to style, to introduce to this bill approved by the House. 
and we'll be proceeding um, in that direction with your assent, um, sir. Yes, uh, we concur with your proposal, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, I agree with you that we should include PRC, the DOST, and probably to have a broader participation of the business sector. We will include uh, the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and the, the Foreign Chamber of uh, Commerce, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, sir. Um, with that, um, Chair hereby approves House Bill number 7370, subject to the amendments discussed and concurred to by Congressman Go and the Secretary's directed to prepare the corresponding committee report to reflect the amendments so stated. So ordered. Thank you, Congressman Go. Moving forward, Philippine Thank Academic you. Regalia Act, Senate Bill number 2201, and House Bill number 7620. May I hear from Ched on this matter, Attorney Spocky? Oh, good afternoon. Actually, just uh, a quick message from our uh, responsible office, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Commission has actually no objections on the intent of the bill. However, it must be noted that based on the Ched records and reports, I know, I'm sorry, on the Regalia Act, Actually, we have no objection to it. I was, I was, uh, yeah, I have to correct myself. We have no objection to the Anong, proposed measure. Message. Will this get rid of the toga? Uh, based on the, how the bill is written, it may or it may not. It really depends. The It would depend on the council. Also, what it might be able to dictate would be what the material the toga would be made of, Mr. Chair. Um, Congressman Go, was the intention in the passage of this bill to, anong tawag dun? Sublay. To replace, to replace the toga with a sublay um, and specify the materials in so far as um, academic regalia is concerned. Uh, Sa akin, it's not... problema yun, ha? Kasi hindi mainit, mas mura pa yung graduate. Yeah, well, it's not the intent, uh, Mr. Chair, but uh, probably as a consequence of uh, using the native, native uh, materials, uh, having this uh, academic regalia, it will just fade away after a while, Mr. Chair. But the initial intent uh, does not prohibit them to use uh, this uh, toga. So may I ask, in the regular toga, anong native dun? Uh, 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 um, Congressman Go, anong, na anong native sa toga? Wha what can happen here, Mr. Chair, is they can have the toga, but uh, they can integrate in the toga the native uh, material uh, that might be uh, probably, uh, you know, the improvement that will be on the current toga that is being used, Mr. Chair. <laughs> I'll read the provision. Pursuant to the provisions of this Act, all sooks and looks shall be required to coordinate with the Council to ensure that neo ethnic Philippine textiles shall be prescribed in their academic regalia, specifically the hood, robe, or gown worn by students in important occasions, such as hooding ceremony or graduation from either a bachelor's, master's, doctorate degree, as well as the faculty and other members of the academic community may be incorporated in the headgear. Mortar board, tassels, stole, and cord, among others. So it does not get rid of the toga really, but it's mandating that local materials be incorporated in the toga? Uh, that is one option, Mr. Chair. Uh, that's one option. Uh, but as I said, uh, a sequence, as a consequence of implementing this bill, once it is put into law, uh, we will find a situation. Find a situation. Uh, Toga might not be any more practical uh, to be used, uh, Mr. Chair. Even if you include the native textile that will be used uh, uh, in, in the toga, Mr. Chair. Um, it only includes sooks and looks, not private HEIs. That's the intention? 
that was the original intention of the bill, Mr. Chair. But uh, I think there is no, you know, we can encourage the uh, private HCIs to use uh, this uh, uh, material, Mr. Chair. Well, there is no penal clause, so there is no penal clause, really. Yes. Although it says it's mandatory. We, we did not uh, include any penal provision in the bill, uh, Mr. Chair. Actually, um, um, Congressman Go, um, wala naman bumibili ng toga eh. Ang mag a adjust nito yung mga nagninegosyong nagpaparenta ng toga. Na yes. bago sila ma-recognize, ma-credit, kailangan sinusunod nila yung batas and they can prove, should be able to prove local content. Would that be correct? Wala naman bibili ng toga eh. Konti lang naman yun eh. Yes, yes, uh, definitely. Um, that's correct, uh, Mr. Chair. So essentially what we're saying is looks and soaks should provide, should accredit a supplier that will have local content in the togas that they are renting out. Diba? Well, uh, we, we stated in the bill, Mr. Chair, just like what you read, uh, we will be creating the Philippine Academic Council, and this council will uh, take the responsibility of uh, uh, instituting uh, uh, or uh, coming out with a, uh, a, you know, first a policy of the National Academic Regalia, uh, review the standards and adopt the academic regalia for graduates, administrators, faculty, and awardees of SUCs, LUCs. Ensure sustainability, control, and availability of yards, ties, loom, and uh, loom parts, as well as propose ways to incorporate neo-ethnic textiles in the academic regalia. So if they decide to use the toga, as long as it is... The, 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 uh, it incorporates the neo textiles in textiles. That will be acceptable, Mr. Chair. Two things, Congressman Go. Um, one, um, would you open? Would you be open to including private HEIs? Uh, personally, Mr. Chair, uh, I, I don't have any objection to that. Um, so, in the Senate version, we will include private. HEIs and include private HEIs rep two in the uh, drafting of the IRR. And we will provide a window within which um, adjustments would be made. For example, um, in the IRR, for it to be specified that this bill shall be fully implemented in off the hip three years, two years to enable the industry to adjust. I, I will agree with that, Mr. Chair. Or for a period not exceeding three years. Parang ganun, di ba? Parang, parang maka-adjust lang yung industry, yung nagnenegosyo ng renta ng toga. Yeah. Gawin na natin five years, Mr. Chair. Not to exceed... Oh, five three. years. Done. Um, Spocky, okay ka lang? No, meaning the, the IRR should include, so we include in Section 7 the period of implementation or effectivity of um, whatever the council will impose will be for a period of not less than five years or not more than five years. Not more than five years. Dear five years, Mr. Chair. Um, the, the... So on the fifth year or let or earlier, dapat may standard na. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, on, on, our, on our end, it's really more of the variety of the type and the design of the academic regalia because we want it also uh, to be at par and at least consistent with international standards. Other than that, as to the materials, it's uh, we have no objection as to that. Mr. Congressman Go, pwede ba three years, but the three-year period will start after the council issues what regalias are approved by the council? Kasi baka magtagal sila, unfair naman, kung fourth year nila nilabas, tas one year to adjust. So three years after the council determines what are the acceptable um, regalia that can be used in both public and private HEIs, dun palang magiging effective yung kanilang determination. 
and applicable and made mandatory to schools. A five years pa rin. Okay lang din sa akin, either way. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Five Chair. Years. Five years will be reasonable. Again, the reckoning point is from the time the council issues, ah, from the time the council issues the specifications for the regalia that can and will be used um, by both public and private HAIs. And we will specify probably in the IRR how long will it take for the council to come out with the uh, standards and guidelines, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay. So we can say within a year. Within a year and uh, not uh, three five, years will be okay. Five years. years. Yes. Within a year, ang problema ko baka late eh. Sige, five years from the approval of the act, basta yung IRR lumabas within the first year. Yes, yes. Okay, para mas klaro. Is yes. it IRR or the handbook? No, we will put it here that the council must come up with the, with the, with the recommendation on what regalia can and will be used within a year and the effectivity of this act insofar as it being mandatory will be five years from the enactment of this act. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I hope the Secretary took note. Um, any other points on this uh, bill, this, this bill, Congressman Go? I, I fully subscribe with your uh, recommendation, uh, Mr. Yes, Chair. Chair. Thank you, sir. Um, Taking into consideration the amendments discussed um, in taking up Senate Bill number 2201 and 7620, Chair hereby approves um, House bill and orders its consolidation and for the Secretary to prepare the corresponding committee report incorporating therein the agreed um, amendments and or changes in the same. So ordered. Item number six, Senate bill number 2169, um, an act converting Tawi-Tawi Regional Agricultural College in um, Tawi-Tawi into a state college. Chad, have they complied? Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, uh, the Tawi-Tawi Regional Agricultural College is currently considered and classified as a state college already. So by this is by Chad, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this, the bill should be more appropriately, appropriately labeled as strengthening their charter and uh, rather than a mere conversion because they're already deemed as a state college. And uh, the chairperson... By administrative fiat. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, and the chairperson of the... Uh, of the Tawi-Tawi Regional, Regional Agricultural College is here right now, uh, Commissioner Libre, as well as their president, Mr. Chair. Is there a need for this bill? There is no counterpart well, there is House bill. There, there is a need to strengthen and update their charter because their charter is actually about as pambansa. Uh, and uh, a lot has changed already, even with 8292. Uh, to incorporate all of these uh, all of later these laws. changes, yes, Mr. Chair. But as to converting them into an agricultural college, uh, they're already deemed as an agricultural college. Okay. Um, right now, we can't recommend also that they be converted into a university yet. They still have a lot of work to do to comply with our requirements for a university, Mr. Chair. Have they applied to be a university? As far as, as, far as we know, not yet, Mr. Chair. Um, Chairman Go, Congressman Go, may I ask, is there a counterpart bill in the House insofar as the Tawi Tawi Regional Agriculture College is concerned? Would you know? Uh, we have not uh, included in, in our agenda, Mr. Chair, but uh, I have to recheck uh, whether there is a bill that was already filed on this. So, uh, I Can I defer um, proceeding with this bill? Because this is technically a local bill that should emanate from the House. Yes. Um, can I defer action until we find out that there is a pending bill? Again, the chair has no objections to it, um, but we can hold its approval in abeyance pending um, the filing in the House of an appropriate House bill on this matter. Uh, Mr. Chair, before uh, we will adjourn this meeting, uh, I will uh, be able to answer your question, Mr. Chair, so we can act on it uh, last, uh, Mr. Chair. Ganto na lang ang gagawin ko, Congressman Go, para mas madali. 
Senate Bill Number 2196 is hereby approved, taking into consideration the suggestion of Attorney Spocky. We have a format for this already, insofar as incorporating the later laws and later shed issuances on the creation and or establishment or strengthening of a state college and university. The same is approved in principle, conditioned upon the filing and or approval of a counterpart measure in the House. And thereafter, um, the secretary is directed to prepare the corresponding committee report in order to be given to plenary without need of any further action on the part of this committee. Perian, Congressman Go. Yes, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Para wala nang intayin, di ba? Yeah. Pag uh, file kayo, tutuloy na namin to. <laughs> ah, there's a bill. House Bill Number 6997. Filed only last February. Okay, so chair amends its order. The same is hereby approved, taking into account um, the suggestions of Attorney Spocky and Shed. Kindly work with the committee, Attorney Spocky, so that you can incorporate our usual. May, may standard yeah. naman tayo. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, and the committee secretary is directed to prepare the corresponding committee report. So ordered. Commissioner Adama, tiko ba nakaupo sa Bulacan? Hindi. I, it's Commissioner Adamat, who sits the chair designate of uh, Bulacan, Mr. Chair. Ah, we will get to that. Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, uh, the uh, Chair Popoy, uh, Chair Devera, Chairman Devera, has requested that he be, he be allowed to join the meeting online, uh, particularly for the bill on, on the Bulacan, Bulacan State University. Especially yes, now. Well. Can we, can Mr. Chair, is it possible to have the Bulacan uh, Ahead. University bill be discussed uh, earlier? Okay, bago yung mga test na? Sige. Yes, yes, okay. Mr. Chair. Parang lahat nga ito nag-attend tungkol dun eh. Sige. Yes. Okay. Um, Chair will skip. Items uh, 7 to 23 and go right ahead to House Bill number 7961, strengthening the Bulacan State University as a system, expanding its curricular offerings and composition of the governing board and appropriating funds, therefore. Um, for the record, a similar bill was filed. Senate Bill Number 1620, which the committee heard last February 21, 2023, but was deferred, pending submission of a position paper by CHED. Last July 12, Senator Gachalian filed a similar bill, Senate Bill Number 2295, on the same subject matter, but has not yet been referred to this committee. So we will take it into consideration, nevertheless, in our discussions. Before I recognize you, Congressman Chairman Goh, May I ask, Ched, um, we defer this um, bill because Ched has not yet submitted a position paper. Actually, I don't state on the record what I know, but I'm asking you, where is your position paper? Uh, it's, uh, I think it's already in route, Mr. Chair. The Sorry? I think it's already in route. It's for, uh, it was already routed to the proper offices and uh, it's being prepared for the signature of the chair. We're just waiting if there's already a final version signed by... Office of the Chair. I think that's also the reason why the Chair himself requested that he be the one to present the position of the Commission. Is he on here this already? I uh, yes, we have already informed uh, his office, and he is. Uh, we are just waiting for their confirmation that the Chair is already available online, Mr. Chair. Congressman Go, we're just waiting for Chair Popoy. Would you like to make some remarks on this bill? Well, I, I just would like to appeal to this uh, committee, Mr. Chair, to have this approved. It has been approved already in the House, and we have deliberated this uh, bill, and we find it in order. As a matter of fact, there are specific provisions that amended the current uh, uh, charter of the Bulacan State University. Uh, and uh, I think it's just, I think it's just after uh, the long deliberations that we had here, and we heard the position of Ched on this, 
uh, I think it's just uh, probably a matter of reiterating their position that it was heard here in the House, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I have um, a differing draft, um, Congressman Go, on the Chad's position on this. That's why I'm awaiting um, um, Chair Popoy's um, um, inclusion in this hearing in order to hear straight from him what exactly is the position of Chad. But in the meantime, if I remember correctly, is the BSU represented here now? Are they were they invited? Ah, because administrative lang. Yeah, uh, I think Bulacan State University is here. Is they are they here? Is Bulacan State University here? No, I don't think so. Are they here? Who is here? But no, no clear. Sino? Sa naman tanong kami. Who is here? You submitted a position paper. Hearing is suspended for a minute while we're awaiting Congressman God um, to find out the identities of the um, representatives from BSU here.
uh, uh, on this uh, uh, strengthening the tawi? tawi tawi agricultural yeah. uh, yes the tawi tawi regional agricultural college so we have a, a, a bill here in pending 6997 yes house bill number 6997 yes yeah Correct? Correct, yes. I already approved it. Ah, approved now, as stated earlier. I yes. approved it, and we will take it up in plenary already. We're, we're waiting here. So, pag dating sa amin yan, we'll just consolidate it and take it into account. Pag yes. magkaiba, may kam tayo. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair uh, you know, there is a, a uh, position of the end of the uh, with regards to the changes approved on the tripartite council, we are suggesting that uh, this should be headed by a public uh, uh, group instead of chair. Sino mag uh, Private. Uh, this is the. Uh, this is what they recommended what they to the president of the Philippines when they met with the president the instead president of a of the chair leading the Philippine uh, tripartite council, it should be headed by a private uh, one of the private sector representatives in the in the board. Um, Attorney Estrada is here from Edgom. May I suggest instead? Wag na test da yung vice chair, gawin mong private sector yung vice chair. Or in fact, we can have two vice chairs, one from the academe and one from the industry. Attorney Arab, would you like to give the position of the EDCOM 2? Yes, Attorney Estrada, we do recognize her. Thank you, with the uh, permission of the Honorable Chair. Um, Honorable Chair, this... Uh, this bill was uh, included in one of our priority bills for year one for EDCOM, EDCOM 2. So there are parallel discussions and consultations with agencies. And, uh, and of course, uh, um, Chair, Chairman Go was the one who also uh, discussed this in the commission meeting. And the commissioners agreed to come up uh, with uh, with proposals to strengthen the bill even more. So some of the points uh, raised during our meetings was first is to um, to make the private sector a vice chair as uh, similar to what you have mentioned mm -hmm. to to make to make the council more agile and prompt and responsive to the needs of the industries. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, aside from that, a separate uh, council secretariat be created that is separate from CHED, again, to move things faster and, uh, and also to, to make uh, the private sector and industry and enterprise, enterprises involvement uh, more, uh, an increased participation in the council, in, especially in, in coming up with the skills needed by the industries. So it's not necessarily... Uh, the PCCI or existing um, industry boards or associations of, of industries, but a probably a new a new entity composed of of private uh, industries and enterprises to 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 drive the ang ano po kasi dito like uh, it, during the initial consultations the comments of the industries are for example slow creation of of training regulations from from TESDA it takes six months to two years. So by the time meron na pong ganon, iba na pong pangangailangan ng mga industry. So just to just to uh, balance that. Uh, um, attorney, Estrada, yes. these are, by your very own words, mere discussions. Is there a decision, a firm recommendation coming from Edcom on this matter? Uh, Mr. Chair, as of now, we uh, we will be discussing these points again on August 17. That's why, um, if if still possible, but. The, the bill has already been approved. We were thinking if we can relay our points na lang po through, uh, co through Chairman Go so that he can relay them po for um, touching the pie come if possible. Po po. With your permission, um, Congressman Go, I've, you and I have both been in Congress for a long time. If we keep on waiting, it will just be delayed. I will not take back my approval and just simply um, make some adjustments on the floor. 
via either individual or committee amendments to accommodate the recommendations of EDCOM, which I hope they will um, fast track instead of waiting for them before um, we act. So um, as a compromise, perhaps, I will uh, schedule deliberations of this measure after the EDCOM comes up with a firm stand and or position with respect to this measure and include them in the um, as part of either the period of during the period of individual and or committee amendments. But hopefully you will be able to do that before we adjourn in October, or hopefully at the latest before the end of the year. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We will comply and we will submit immediately. Congressman Go. Attorney Strada, uh, August 17 is too late already. This bill has been pending since uh, last year in the Senate. Uh, and I would suggest that uh, we just agree what are these items uh, this week and we can incorporate them immediately. In the <laughs> can you do that? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, we'll submit uh, immediately. We'll just circulate an email uh, with the permission of the chair to the, uh, so uh, we will wait. Of the commission. Again, I will not take back the earlier approval. We will simply await. Um, Secretary is directed to include the inputs from EDCOM along the lines we discussed just now with Congressman Go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ano, wala pa si Bapoy? I agree. Thank you, Congressman Go. Wala pa si Chair um, wala pa, Mr. Chair. We're awaiting Chair Popoy for the BSU, um, Congressman Go. But as soon as he's online, please let us know, Attorney Spocky. Yes, Mr. Chair. We will um, jump right straight to that as soon as Chair Popoy is um, available. In the meantime, with the permission of Congressman Go, I will just dispose of some minor bills, mostly House Bill. All of it, actually. House Bill seeking to create a TESDA training center. So, um, Chair would like to proceed with item, items number 7 to 14 and take it up omnibusly, namely House Bill number 7756, 7839, 7904, 7905, 7906, 7907, 7908, Senate Bill number 2167. I'm all seeking to establish a TESDA training and assessment center. I think we have an amendment on this already, Diba. In this assessment center. Um, training center. Um, Congressman Go, earlier, the bills we have been approving and or churning out is removing the word assessment and simply establishing a training center um, depending on um, the need. But TESDA usually says all they need is a training center and not an assessment center as it will overly burden them if it includes um, the assessment part. So for these House bills and Senate bill, may I inquire from TESDA, is your position still um, training center lang or assessment center then? Attorney Joyce? Good morning again, Mr. Chair. Uh, our position is still on training center. Training center. Training center. Yes, Mr. Chair. Can you explain for the benefit of um, those who are here um, and Congressman Go why that is? So, for the record again. For the training center, po, uh, medyo mas maluwag po ang compared sa assessment center. Lahat po ang assessment center has uh, requirement po. So, we hope na tanggalin po sa mga titles um, ang training center, yung word assessment. Ano ba yung ginagawa? What do you mean by assessment center? As, after po kasi, yung, as compared po sa training center, yung training po kasi is nagbibigay ng training, but assessment means the center is accredit uh, or not accredit but assessed in issues and C2 certificates. So kung hindi gagawing assessment center to, let's say, um, yung saligaw, saan sila magpapa-assess? Mr. Chair, may Lig mga... Ligaw is in Bicol. Okay po. Uh, ligaw Chair, is in Bicol. So saan sila magpapa-assess kung hindi natin lalagyan ng assessment center ang ligaw? Mr. Chair, may mga accredited uh, assessment centers po in Bicol area na pwede nilang puntahan. Are these under TESDA or actually operated by TESDA? Um, assessment centers may be public or private. Meron pong pinatawag na public which is TBI. 
center. Those are private ones. But yung mga TPIs na tinatawag natin uh, uh, under TESTA, mga ganun din po na assessment center po, Mr. Chair. Ma'am, can you go over the sites provided for in the bills being taken up? You have a copy of the agenda, right? Yes, Mr. Chair. Ligao, Albay, Kamamanan City, CDO, Tagkawayan, Quezon, Bayombong, Vizcaya, Minal Minalabak, Camarines Sur, Labangan, Zamboanga del Sur, Liloy, Zamboanga del Norte, and um, Tubud, province of Lanao del Norte. Do you have assessment centers in those provinces and or um, adjacent municipalities? Mr. Chair, the list that I have are the list of trading centers in those. Uh, as of the moment, I'm uh, considering the list of assessment centers in those areas. Do you have an assessment center as a general rule in every province? Mr. Chair, yes. Both, both private and public? Um, for public, I cannot assure you, Mr. Chair, because we have a number of assessment centers. Na, pero yung sa private, pero yung sa private, um, meron po. Congressman Go, may I ask, um, would that be okay with you? We will approve it in total, but only in so far as it's the establishment of a training center is concerned without the word assessment center uh mr Those chair Margaret, yeah the very concept here is uh yung one-stop shop after the training that you conduct as tesda you need to assess whether uh, what they have uh, been trained to have been implicated uh, and they have the skills already they have the assessment and uh, after the assessment, they issue it on uh, NC1, NC2, NC3. Now, if there are existing assessment centers in the different areas, I think uh, as long as it will be very easy for them to do the assessment after the training, that will be acceptable to me, Mr. Okay. Attorney Joyce, kindly submit to us the location of your assessment centers vis-a-vis. The locations of the training and assessment centers being proposed, if it is in the adjacent municipality, would that be sufficient, Congressman Go? Yes, yes. We will sir. remove the word assessment. If it is not in the adjacent municipality or at least contiguous, we will include the word assessment and include the establishment of it as an assessment center. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, that's uh, okay with me. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Attorney Joyce, kindly submit to us, please. Yes, Mr. Chair, we permit to submit. However, Mr. Chair, Chair hindi nakalagay yung word na place mo sa mga bills. There's no prohibition for these bills na mag-apply pa rin naman. And in case, pwede naman itong itakay. Of course. No, it's not exclusive. It's not exclusive and it's not prohibit the establishment of others. Yes, Pop. Yeah. Okay, Chair here by orders, omnibusly. In so far as again, House Bill number 7756, 7839, 7904, 7905, 7906, 7907, 7908, and Senate Bill number 2617. The same is hereby approved in accordance with the discussions earlier that if there is an adjacent and or contiguous municipality with an assessment center that we will simply establish a training center. However, if there is none, that we will establish a training and assessment center and for the corresponding bills, both House and Senate bills, be amended accordingly as the case may be. And um, TESTA is hereby directed to submit um, the location vis-a-vis -vis the areas uh, mentioned in the House and House and Senate bills of their existing assessment centers. And thereafter, Secretary is directed to prepare the corresponding committee report. So ordered. Wala pa si Chair Popoy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Pinaghihintay niyo si Congressman Go, ha? Susunod na tayo ito. Next bill. Next bill, Mr. Chair. Anyway, ito. Itong next 229. Ah, administrative lang to. Congressman, I'll, I'll deal with it now. 
Okay. Senate Bill Number for some administrative matters. Senate Bill Number 2229, an act establishing the Philippine Entrepreneurs Academy and appropriating funds therefore. A similar bill was earlier filed, Senate Bill Number 1351, heard by this committee last October 25, 2022. Senate Bill Number 1628, on the same subject matter, heard by this committee last February 21. And Senate Bill Number 2090, heard last May 11, 2023. A substitute bill has been transmitted to the committee for routing since May 31. We have yet to complete the signatures on this. Chair hereby orders the Senate Bill Number 2229 be consolidated and taken into consideration in relation to the substitute bill being routed as we speak. House Bill Number 7400, an act institutionalizing the enterprise-based education and training program to strengthen technical vocational educational training and appropriating funds therefore. A similar bill was filed um, previously, Senate Bill Number 363, heard by the committee last September 7, 2022. What is the status of this bill? We had a PWG mass two weeks ago for essential. TWG has been conducted. This was previously um, approved in principle, not in. Yes. This was previously approved in principle, and TWG is finalizing its version. Chair hereby orders the House Bill Number 7400 be taken into consideration in the preparation of the substitute um, bill. House Bill Number 7922, an act establishing a voucher system. Um, we had this discussion yesterday, Congressman Go. We had a meeting between Chair Popoy, myself, and Secretary Mina of the DBM. To address the problem, yung utang ba dun sa mga nag-exceed sa enrollment sa budget na binigay under the Free Tertiary Education Act, amounting to more or less the remaining balance is about 2.7 billion for 2022. Kaya naging 2.7 billion yun, nabawasan na yun ng over 400 million dahil nagbayad ng konti ang CHED galing sa kung ano mang pinaghuguta nila. But the actual bill to be uh, uh, paid for was about 3.2 billion. So we're assuming that in 2023, mga 3.2 billion din uli yun. Or a combined um, total na sinisingil na mga suks of about 6 billion or 5.9 billion to be exact. We agreed yesterday, um, Congressman Go, um, I think Chair Pope will inform you today or tomorrow. Unahan ko na lang siya. For you, me, Chair Popoy and Secretary Mina to meet with the representatives of the uh, state universities and colleges and looks asking to be paid. Um, and in order to correct, um, kasi naapektuhan yung pondo ng, uh, ng tese. Naapektuhan yung pondo ng tese. So, ang sabi nila, meron kaming inaprobahan kasi dito, oh, nasa floor pa ba? O, oh, aprobado na. Yung sa test natin. We have a we have a bill on the floor which underwent partial interpolation already. We will consolidate this with that bill because according to Chair Popoy, if it's going to be based only on NHTS, he can fully cover the test requirements of NHTS. Mawawala na yung no look, no sook. Basta NHTS ka, cover ka. Um, that's what he is proposing in so far as this bill is concerned on the voucher um, system. He will na usapan yung pag usapan natin dun sa bayarin sa mga soks na utang daw sa kanila. Yes. Um, also, for your information, Congressman Go, this problem arose because the soks wanted the money to be directly remitted to them. Dati kasi hawak ng shed, nagreklamo ang suk, may delay daw sa pagbabayad. So sabi nila, erecta nyo na sa amin. So nirekta sa kanila. Ang problema, alam na nila yung budget kung magkano yung kinocover natin sa free tertiary education and yet they open the enrollment wide to exceed the budget tapos ngayon maniningil. And in real terms, only half of the schools did that, not all. So my concern when we discussed yesterday was 
if we pay everything, we're like encouraging them to continually abuse this prerogative. And essentially, we penalize the schools who follow na ito lang yung budget namin, ito lang yung i-enroll din namin. So yesterday, part of the discussion was, we will agree to a 10% increase per annum. They cannot exceed that anymore. Number two, if they exceed, chargeable na yon sa reserve income nila o savings nila, hindi na dapat obligayin yung gobyerno na pikit mata magbabayad. Three, since according to DBM, yung libro ng mga SOC ay, uh, ay uh, at least 100 million ng reserve savings, DBM, given its fiscal space limitations, will most likely not pay the whole amount, but will pay a portion of the amount, not less than 50%. They're still doing their math. Um, and we also discussed yesterday, Congressman Go, the fact that the moratorium will end this year. Increases. The five-year moratorium on increase. Now, you have to understand the plight of DBM. Sooks cannot be simply allowed to increase their fees till kingdom come and expect government to pay them. How will we even know? So there were discussions along those lines too yesterday. Either extend the moratorium or give notice to Sooks and looks that this is all that government can afford to pay with X number of students. Yes. Hindi naman pwedeng mag increase sila ng... Parang ginawa ng ibang sukat look. Nung alam nilang magpapasa na yung batas na free tertiary, tinaasa nila yung mga tuition fee nila arbitrarily. Um, di ba? It's, yes, it's yes. not sustainable. I, I agree with you, Mr. Chair. You know, I, I have even a proposal. Ang nangyayari dito... Binibigyan na natin ang edukasyon and because of the passage of the Social Action Education, binabayaran pa natin yung dating binabayaran ng mga estudyante. Para wala ng computation siguro, alamin na natin magkano ba yung total na dapat ibigay natin sa kanila with 10% increase let's say every year. Then we just have one budget for them. I completely agree that we are on the same page. We will meet soon and we will call them soon, Congressman Go, and discuss this. Asa na ba si Chair Popoy? Wala pa ba? Wala na kami ibang pag-uusapan kung hindi BSU. Yeah, I think we need to meet and talk about that, uh, Mr. Chair. We agreed, um, Congressman, Chairman Go, that um, after our meeting, and if we agree, we come up with a common stand DBM, Chad, you and me, and discuss this matter with the representatives of uh, Sooks and Looks. Yes. Chair Popoy, nandiyan na? Wala pa? Wala pa, Mr. Chair, but uh, we do have the position on uh, the Mountain Province State University issue. Oh, Mountain Latin. Province. Bulakan ang kailangan ko. Bula, bulakan. Ano ba yung Mountain Province? Bula, 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 bula. Tapos na yun. 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 Wait. So, in so far as um, the voucher system is concerned, Chair hereby orders that the same be consolidated and taken into consideration. In so far as um, Committee Report Number Seven is concerned, it's ordered. Item Number Eighteen: An Act, House Bill Number Seven Seven Five Five, An Act establishing City of Antipolo, test the assessment center. The bill is similar to Senate Bill Number 1773, heard by the committee last February 21, 2023, and um, the committee report is already being drafted. So, Chair hereby orders that House Bill Number 7755 be consolidated and taken into consideration in relation to Senate Bill Number 1773. Senate Bill Number 2175, um, a bill similar was filed, Senate Bill Number 1266. Heard by the committee last October 25, um, we are awaiting a House bill on this, on the establishment of a TESDA, Congressman Go, in Maasin Leyte. As soon as the House bill is, um, a House bill is filed, we will proceed with the preparation of the corresponding committee report 
on the Senate bill. Okay. Senate bill number 2178, a similar bill was filed. Senate bill number 1948, heard by the committee last May 11. We are also awaiting House bill, a counterpart House measure. So the secretary is directed to coordinate with her House counterpart insofar as the filing of a House bill um, in relation to Senate bill number 2175 and 2178. Sorted. House Bill Number 7564, an act allowing the incumbent president. Blah, 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 blah. A bill similar to Senate Bill Number 209 was heard by the committee last May 11, 2023, and the committee report is ready for drafting already. Um, Chair hereby orders that House Bill 7546 be consolidated and taken into account in relation to Senate Bill Number 209. Naspali. Uh, we're just waiting for the final word. We have already in, uh, informed our executive director and the HEA of uh, our chair regarding uh, the whereabouts of Chairman Popoy. Uh, it's quite unusual for him. No, to wala. Uh, so right now, we were actually concerned because he's driving himself. The last tech message was that he was driving himself uh, to the office, Mr. Chair. So, okay. While we are awaiting the... Um, presence of uh, virtually of Chairman Popoy. Congressman Go, wala pa si Chair Popoy eh. um, I will suspend the hearing in the meantime and um, let your staff alert you when I resume. Hopefully, Chair Popoy will join us sooner than later because his heya has not yet gotten back to their representative here, Attorney Spaki. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very unusual also for the Chair to not... Uh... Answer your calls, Mr. Chair. Because so we're just making sure that he is safe also. Well, Congressman Got Chair Popoy manifested through their representative here that he wanted to be heard on BSU. Yeah, yeah, we will hear him. Uh... So I will suspend in the meantime the hearing while we're awaiting um, Chair Popoy. Our Kapika, apologies. Kapika, Kapika, muna. Our apologies, Kapika. Mr. Chair, and to them. Uh, hearing is suspended. Sir.
the office of the chair uh, of Chairman De Vera that is already uh, in his office and he is actually lagging in already. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hearing is hereby resumed. Kahit magulo pa ang buhok ni Chair Baboy. Congressman Go, um, may we request your virtual presence? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'm here. All right. Thank you, Congressman Good. We now resume consideration of House Bill Number 7961. And for this purpose, recognize. Gusto mo bang huminga muna ng mga limang segundo, Popoy? O okay ka na? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm so sorry. The rain, the rain here in Quezon City is really very, very strong. And the traffic is really very bad. But I'm here to... Answer whatever questions with respect to the position paper of Chad on the uh, Bulacan State University as a system as proposed in the bill. Uh, it's formally non existent, Chair Popoy, the position paper of Chad that is. It's formally non existent. So we maybe hear from you and find out what is the position of Chad regarding this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There are, there are three points we would like to raise with respect to the bill, and we also raised it already in the hearing of the House of Representatives. Uh, the first one is, uh, if you talk of a university system as practiced uh, in uh, other parts of the world, there are two models that are usually used in creating a uh, university system. The first one, which is done extensively in the United States, is to put together different educational institutions to different, uh, different facilities, even by public libraries, together in one system governed by a board so that there is a common direction and purpose, there is sharing of facilities and personnel, there is economies of scale, of the viability of degree programs, and to facilitate policy making similarly so that higher education in the whole state moves in one direction. Examples of this are the University of California system, which I am sure our legislators are, are uh, aware of. There is also the State University of New York system, which includes both community colleges, uh, state colleges, technical colleges, all in one. Uh, there are several models in the U.S. University of Maryland is there. No? The other option is... Like what happened in the UP Charter, a university that has become very big, very difficult to govern, so many campuses nationwide. In the UP Charter, it decided to create a university system so that management of the different units are facilitated, but there is common direction at the top. And the different units of UP have their own specialization, but they have a common purpose. This is also the principle used when the University of Rizal system was, uh, was made. Uh, our observation, as far as Guadalajara State University is concerned, is that it does not fall in either of these models or systems. Uh, the, the five campuses of Bursu are all located within the same province. They're accessible by large transportation. But the more important uh, element, Mr. Chair, is there are so many other higher education institutions in Bulacan that are independently operating, including the Bulacan Agricultural State College, there are PUP campuses, there's a Bulacan Polytechnic College, Pamantasan Dalubasaan ng Marilao, Baliwag Polytechnic College, North Carolina College, etc. In short, if the intention is to systematize and put in one direction higher education in the province of Bulacan, if you create a system, it should, just like in the American model, incorporate all the higher education institutions under one board, under one direction, so you can maximize resources, share faculty, have one common direction for higher education in the province. Uh, that, that is our concern. Uh, 
if, if, if it is a system and there are so many other higher educations uh, uh, operating in the province, we're, we're not very clear on what is really the uh, long-term purpose of creating a system. Uh, so the bill as, uh, as filed does not, does not uh, conceptualize a system similar to UP because the different units of Bulsu are... Uh, do not have their own specialization, they don't have their whole niche. Plus, as I've said, there's a lot of higher education institutions uh, operating. So there is no efficiency, there is no economies of scale in the whole, uh, in the whole province. Uh, th that is what is not clear uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the bill. And if we allow the Bulacan State University to have a system, I am concerned, Mr. Chair, that many other uh, state universities will also adopt the same in the different provinces. Uh, even if there are other SOOCs in the provinces, there are other LOOCs, they will all create their system. So you may, have a, you may have a situation where there are two systems operating in the same province. If there are one or more or more than one uh, state university, uh, uh, operating in the province. And it, we are concerned that this might create a trend where the different state colleges will now go to Congress and all ask that they become a system. And, and we, may, we may be creating a bigger problem, Mr. Chair, over the long term. So that is our, that is our concern as far as the uh, Bulso bill is concerned. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm ready to answer questions. If there are any. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, sure. um, um, before that, Congressman Go, um, just one one query. Um, the constituent units of BSU. Um, there is a is there a memorandum circular issued by DBM? Issued by DBM that these constituent units for it to be covered in any proposed budget of um, the governing board should be recognized by an act of Congress, such as this one. Because constituent units na sila, but it was done by administrative fiat, perhaps by the board, without recognition from Congress. Um, according to BSU officials, um, there is a necessity to make such a legislative recognition of these constituent units, whether we call it a system or not, uh, just to include them formally in an amendment to the charter through this, perhaps, para masama sila ng DBM kasi hindi sila nag-comply according to DBM until they do that. Are you familiar with it, Sir Popoy? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, we understand the desire of Bulsu to be able to generate more resources. If we can do it without creating a system, we will support it. We would support any effort to provide more resources, provide fiscal autonomy to a state college. So we're just concerned that we might be setting a precedent where all the other universities will now go to Congress and we will have we will have systems all over the place. But if the intention is they are integrated into the university so that budget purposes, they will come in, we are in full support, Mr. Chair. The reason, Congressman Go, why I asked that question before I recognized you was, is that I think this can be approved by removing the word system and simply focusing on strengthening and amending the existing charter of um, the BSU without characterizing it, as Chairman Papoy said, as a system. So it can be in total, except for the reference or use of the word system only. What um, say you, Congressman Go? Well, I don't have any objection with that, Mr. Chair. But, uh, you know, uh, during our hearing, uh, if you recall, Chairman Popo, you mentioned that uh, Bulsu is already a system. Am I correct, uh, Chairman Popoy? Uh, Mr. Chair, I do not, 
I do not uh, remember saying that because in the practice of systems uh, in, in other parts of the world, even in the Philippines, there are only two systems in the Philippines, a uh, three, MSU is a system, UP is a system, and then the University of Rizal system was created, integrating all the HEIs in the province of Rizal into one uh, state university, uh, Mr. Chair. Well, uh, I will not, uh, you know, argue on that, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, but I have the minutes of the meeting of our uh, hearing on this. But nevertheless, uh, you know, I, I would not uh, disagree if we just remove the system and maintain the same provisions of uh, the particular uh, measure that uh, we have proposed uh, for the Senate's approval. Uh, now, a major contention that was mentioned to me is uh, the provision on giving another term to the incumbent president. I think that's an issue that has been uh, debated. Uh, and uh, when I look at the charter now of uh, uh, Bulacan State University, under Section 10, it says here the university shall be headed by a president to be elected by the members of the board and shall hold office for a period of six years without reappointment. What we would like to do is align this uh, provision with the other existing provisions of all SLCs in the country, where they are holding their position for uh, four years, uh, subject to one re-election. And that is the main reason why we have included in the bill that uh, once the incumbent president uh, completes her whole piece, she will be given the opportunity to serve for another term without re-election, Mr. Mr. Chair. And if that is acceptable to the committee, Mr. Chair, I, I think I will agree with the position that we just remove the term system and just strengthen uh, the Bulacan State University with the same provisions as proposed by the House. Um, I, I understand that concern, Congressman Go. Actually, I'm well aware of that um, concern. Um, with one caveat, it is beyond our control when this will be finally, depending on the minority in the Senate, for example, when this will be approved here and when the president will sign it. Now, yes. the term of the incumbent president will end before the end of the month, on August 29. So assuming the president signs this and becomes effective after completion of its publication, sometime in September, it will be a new president already. I think that the contemplation of this provision is that it will still be the incumbent president who technically already served two consecutive terms and since in Abutanya, another four years. But what if, madelay, does that mean na yung bagong presidente will only sit for four years, walang re-election, when under the law, said regulations, he is entitled to a reappointment, even in the bill itself. So, yung nuance lang na yun. How do we address that situation given that we don't control the time when it will be approved? It might refer to the new president already, and we're shortening his term na hindi na siya pwedeng reappoint dahil one term lang. If it's the existing one at Inabutan, I have no problem with that. I'm okay with that. Well, uh, Mr. Chair, yeah, I think that's a very good hypothetical uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's an hypothetical case. It, it might happen. So we can just uh, address that and uh, provide in the provision that should there be, uh, we, we put certain uh, provision that will address your concern, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, subject to style. Yes. Our staff will coordinate with your staff, subject to style, to accommodate that possibility para yung, yung bago na yung presidente, hindi naman siya limited to one term lang. Yes, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Understood. Chair Popo, anything else you want to add? We will clean up the bill and... Um, uh, Mr. Chair, 
clarify Mr. this provision in so far as section 10 is concerned and make Mr. sure Chair. that the constituent units are all recognized. Yes, Chair Baboy. Yeah, in, in the guidelines of Chair on uh, conversion into university system, what we would like to see is that the constituent units have their own specialization and niche and on a standalone basis, they can actually become, uh, become uh, you know, have the full characteristics already of a higher education institution. I think we should put in the bill that if there is a strengthening of the units, it is good that the different uh, units of Bulacan State University have their own specialization, have their own unique characteristics, and that they, when assessed, they will all have the same level of... Uh, you know, of uh, the quality of education provided uh, so that there is really strengthening. If the intention is strengthening, just like UP, the different units of UP have their own specialization, they have their own administration, and they are as good as each other. Para yung mga naiiwan ng mga campuses, consciously, when we strengthen, palalakasin talaga sila. The resources are poured there so that there is evenness in terms of the quality of education across the different campuses. So if, the, if we can put a provision to that effect, that when we strengthen them, the objective is really to have similarity and quality assurance across all the campuses and a specialization in each of the campus. Uh, I, I hope that can be put there as a provision uh, Mr. Chair, if the objective is to strengthen the different components of Bulacan State University. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Agree, Chair Popoy. We will accommodate it again subject to style in sections 2 and 3 of the proposed measure, House Bill Number 791, in the Declaration of Policy and in the um, university campuses and other units um, provided for. Mr. Chair, can I have one more manifestation? I, I yes, agree Sir with that suggestion, uh, Mr. Chair. Of, uh, yeah, the reason why I mentioned that is Julie because... Noted, in, Congressman Go. Yeah, Mr. Chair, yes, I Chair mentioned Baboy. that because in the assessment of chair, ang dami, ma, ang dami pa pong degree programs ng bulso na walang certificate of program compliance sa chair. Some of their programs do not even comply to the minimum standards of faculty qualification, of facilities, of, uh, of uh, curriculum. Kaya meron talagang mga naiwan ng mga, ng mga degree programs. And I hope that if the intention is to strengthen them, there is a conscious effort to comply with the minimum standards of CHED in the grant of the Certificate of Program Compliance. Kakaunti ho ang degree programs nila na may COPC. Medyo talo pa sila ng ibang local universities and colleges because we require 100% COPC for looks to be part of free higher education. That is where I'm coming from, Mr. Chair. Dapat meron requirement doon na mag-comply sila with the minimum requirements uh, on uh, quality assurance. Thank you, Mr. Chair. But isn't that a given already, Chair Popoy? Otherwise, the course will not be recognized by CHED. Med medyo mabagal po mag-comply eh. Yung mga ibang sok natin, kahit na may special provision na sa GAA, requiring CHED to monitor them, medyo mabagal po mag-comply yung iba, lalo na yung uh, supposedly magagandang mga sok, madaming naiiwan na program hanggang ngayon, hindi pa compliant, Mr. Chair. Thank you. We will note your comments, Chair Popoy, but I don't think it has any place in the bill given that it's, a re it's, it's only a reaffirmation and reiteration of a previous law that requires compliance with said requirements for all the courses being offered by HEIs, whether private or um, public. But Julie noted, and we will convey it to um, Bulsu um, if they indeed want to um, elevate the status of um, Bulsu. Any other comments? If there are no other comments, Chair will instruct the Secretary to immediately prepare the corresponding committee report on this to reiterate, including the concern of Chair Popo in Section 2 and 3, subject to style of House Bill Number 7961, incorporating all eventualities depending on when the bill will be passed into law, 
in so far as Section 10 is concerned on the incumbent president, quote, unquote. And number three, all references to a system, Bolso system, shall be removed and or taken out, including the title, which shall only be an act strengthening the Bulacan State University, comma, ext expanding its curricular offerings and the composition of the governing board and appropriating funds, therefore, sans the word system. Congressman Go, Chair Papoy, are agree. we in agreement? Thank you very much. Again, um, Chair directs the Committee Secretary to immediately prepare the bill within this week so that it can be routed later this week or at the latest by Monday next week to give it a fair chance at making it to the August 29 deadline, although I doubt it, but let's see what will happen. Um, Chair Popoy, thank you for rushing. Thank you for your time. Inintay ka lang talaga namin, kanina pa dapat kami tapos. Thank you for waiting for me, Mr. Chair. The traffic is really bad because the rain is really strong in the Quezon City area. Understood. No problem. Um, we understand and no worries too. Chairman Go, thank you for um, joining us this morning. Sorry for taking up your morning. But thank nevertheless, you, we appreciate you, your participation, comments, and inputs. Thank you, Chairman. Chair. Senator Chi, Senator to all the other invited guests, thank you for joining us virtually and physically um, and for your inputs as well. Um, there being no other matters to be taken up, the um, hearing of the Committee on Higher Technical Education is hereby suspended. Thank you very much for your participation, gentlemen and ladies.